Alright, well, it's certainly been a while since my last video on the Bessemer engine here. And, uh, I've done a few things to it since you guys have seen it last. I'm sorry I haven't actually had any video of it running, which is... I know that's what everybody wants to see, but, uh... I could do that today, but it's raining out, as you can tell and you can hear. So, no running engines outside today. But, uh, it gives me an opportunity to continue along with, uh, some other... Uh, jobs related to this engine. Um, I have uh, got the carburetor all worked out finally, or the fuel injector, uh, the fuel injector or fuel uh, feeder, as they call it. I've made a second float, uh, aside from the one that I made that you saw previously. Turns out the first one that I made didn't allow for enough uh, clearance in the uh, along the side walls here which is a similar problem to the, the original one had. Um, and as a result, it would tend to bind up along the, uh, the threaded portion here. Once it would raise up with the fuel, it would tend to bind and allow the engine to flood. So I made a smaller float, smaller in diameter at least. That seems to have solved that problem. But uh, then I moved on to another issue that the engine had. If I can get this straight. There we go. Issue, another issue this engine had, which was that the inlet valve, it's an atmospheric inlet valve, or intake valve, uh, the stem was very, very badly worn, and the guide as well, uh, so that the engine, it, although the valve sealed fairly well uh, along the face in the seat, uh, it wouldn't open reliably, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't suck in uh, a uh, you know a consistent charge of air so that caused some issues uh, with the engine running so what I've done is uh, you're looking at the um, natural gas mixer uh, uh, which is this portion here and then uh, the gas would flow down into around the intake valve uh, seating area but right now that I'm since I'm running it on liquid fuel it's just an intake valve but anyway so you can see down there the uh, the underside of the valve head there and the stem. What I did was I, I put the valve, the original valve, in the lathe and cut off the stem and uh, drilled the head through the center where the stem originally was. And, I've, and then I made a new stem out of uh, tool steel and made, you can see, a bronze bushing there uh, for the valve guide. So I put the whole, this whole mixer assembly in the lathe and then bored that straight through, uh, oversized to accommodate the 3 8 OD uh, bronze valve guide. Uh, the uh, valve stem is uh, 5 16 so that seals well now and it doesn't have any, any slop in it, which is quite important. Here's the original uh, valve stem, you can see where I cut it off on the lathe and just you can see the pitting there and at the end here and it's just it's uh, 5 16 diameter and it just was not uh, a consistent diameter throughout that coupled with the uh, wear in the actual mixer itself in the body the valve danced around quite a bit so uh, and the, these threads on here are for this top adjustment which um, you know, controls uh, it controls a combination of things: how far the valve can travel, of course, and then how uh, immediate the effect that the governor arm has on the uh, valve. So it it goes into speed regulation and uh, fuel mixture. But anyway, so that's another thing I work I've been working on with this engine, and I've gotten it to run pretty well. It's very easy starting on gasoline compared to when it was on the. Uh, propane I was running it on, but uh, you don't need a flashlight anymore. Um, the next step is to actually uh, allow it to run under load, because although it runs decent without a load, as soon as you put any kind of um, tension on the on the uh, uh, belt pulley, it just runs so much nicer and it hits every time, really smooths out well. And I have a plan for this engine, and I've had it for a number of years now, that it was going to drive a generator, which would sit right where this flywheel is right here. So uh, I have a DC dynamo, which you've seen in a video from a few years ago, that was going to be mounted there permanently and flat belt driven. 
So I'm working on that now. I'll show you what's going on with that. Okay, this armature might look a little bit familiar uh, from a video I put up a while ago called How to Use an Armature Growler. This is the example that I used. Um, and if you remember in that video, or I can't even recall to be honest with you, um, so long ago, that the shaft side bearing, or the pulley side bearing, was in very, very bad condition. Had two deep, deep score marks right here, about here and here. Uh, you know, just from years of use and lack of maintenance. So uh, I'm in the process of cleaning that up now. Uh, I'm going to have to turn the shaft down to an inch and an eighth uh, diameter. It was originally an inch and a quarter, but I have to have had to lose that eighth of an inch in diameter just to get the shaft to a point where it's uh, clean and smooth. Here's the original diameter here, and this is the, uh, the um, commutator side. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have to turn this down too. There's quite a bit of wear. Well, not 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 too severe, but I'm going to make new bearings for both sides, so I might as well clean this up to a uh, uh, standard size. This is inch and a quarter right now. I might take it down to one and a sixteenth, or uh, no, not one and a sixteenth, one and three sixteenths, and uh, that should clean that up pretty well. But uh, let me show you what the bearings looked like for this. All right, so here's the original. Uh, bronze bearing for the uh, DC dynamo that I'm going to be using, uh, going to be driving with the Bessemer engine. Um, this was the pulley side bearing, and you can see I'll bring it up to the light here. How uh, how rough it really was, and you can you can understand by looking at this now why the shaft uh, was in bad such bad shape. If you want to see what that shaft looked like, you can go back to. Uh, the video called How to Use an Armature Growler, and I believe um, at that time uh, you could still see how bad the, the pulley side shaft on the rotor was, or the armature. So you can see the, the wear there. I don't know if you can tell how the, the hole is oblonged in this direction. You can see this, this bearing would have set in the housing here like this so you can imagine there would have been a pulley on it and the belt would have been pulling upward at an angle to make it wear so severely in that area you can see the the channel cut in the rim here would be the oil return channel there's a drain hole there and that channel is just completely gone over here it just worn right down through it the same thing with this side worn almost all the way to the bottom there and uh, the oil channels you can see them cut right there. How they're just gone on this side here where all the wear uh, occurred. Neat thing about this uh, bearing and this, this whole generator itself is the, uh, this, this uh, notch that was cut here. Uh, it's for oiling and uh, the engine or the generator uh, employed this little ring here to uh, ride in this groove on the shaft so the bearing is stationary and the shaft is rotating and the this ring is riding on the shaft going around and around and around and uh, this sits in an oil reservoir which this area right here there's an oil cup here and the drain hole at the bottom so uh, oil reservoir and as the uh, the shaft is spinning this ring is riding on the shaft and spinning it's picking up oil as it's going through the reservoir and just bathing the the shaft in oil um, so the oil would travel down these, uh, down the grooves here in the bearing. You can see them there. And then all the way to the end and then collect in the, uh, this, these two grooves on the end here and then drain out there, back into the reservoir. So it's pretty nice, pretty, uh, nicely made generator. This is, uh, Imperial Electric. This is the, uh, stator or the uh, field, we could say. So, um, I've got some bronze already. Uh, I'll show you that uh, sitting down here underneath the lathe. I want this uh, length of cord bearing bronze. So it's a one inch ID right now and two inch OD. And uh, this is going to be used for the, uh, the bearings in the generator, as well as uh, I'm going to make the new main bearings for the one horsepower mogul out of this uh, bronze as well so let me get back to work and uh, keep you updated